Hi, welcome to Essential IT and Security Skills. I'm Charles Redmond, Master Trainer, here to guide you through the essentials that you are going to need to land the job that you are looking for. In this series, we're going to talk about essential PC skills. I'm going to walk you through everything from software to hardware. Most people know me as a cybersecurity expert. Well, I couldn't have gotten there without learning the basics first. That's what this series is going to do. And then we'll move on in some later series with some more advanced concepts and techniques. But remember, it all starts with the basics. It starts right here, the essential PC skills. So how does the computer work? Well, it's basically a collection of hardware and software. Hardware is the stuff that you kick, like your mouse or your monitor or your keyboard. Software. It's what you interact with. It's the operating system, whatever that is, whether it's Windows or Mac or Linux, as well as the applications that make PCs useful. The basics of operating a PC is essentially input from a keyboard or a mouse or possibly a webcam, the processing of that information, and then the output of that information and storage. A good PC technician understands all of these parts and how they interact at various stages. How to take a broken and malfunctioning PC and turn it into a happy, fixed PC. So can you name all the parts of the computer? First you start with the system or the case, an output device like your monitor, or a mouse a set of speakers possibly, and a printer. Oh, and let's not forget about the keyboard. To understand how all this hardware makes the PC useful, we need to first start at the beginning and understanding the different types of external connectors. There are six basic types that you'll need to understand. The Mini-DIN, USB, Firewire, DB, RJ, and audio connectors. The DIN connectors are the little round connectors usually used for keyboards and mice. USB, most common with today's devices, are hot swappable which means you can plug them in and unplug them without having to reboot the computer. You'll usually find a USB-B plug connecting to modern printers, a USB-A plug plugging into your computer itself, and then USB mini B connectors plugging into smaller devices like possibly your cell phone. Firewire connectors move data at incredibly high speeds. You'll also see these referred to as IEEE 1394s. Most popular video applications are going to use a Firewire connector. These, just like USB, are also hot swappable. Then you have your DB connectors, given its name by the slight D shape of the connector itself, usually found with old printers. And then your RJ connectors. You'll need to understand two different types, RJ11s, which plug into the telephone line, and RJ45s that plug into the network interface card, or the NIC. Audio connectors you'll find these on your sound cards. It's what's used to connect speakers and microphones or any other audio device. Also, the mini audio jacks. The connections on the back of modern PCs have been standardized with a color coding so that you can quickly identify what type of connection goes where. Like the VGA is blue, the parallel lines, remember the DB connectors? Those are burgundy or possibly a microphone, which is going to be pink. So now that you understand the different types of connectors, let's figure out which devices use these connectors. The connectors themselves are exposed on the rear or possibly the front of your PC. Some connectors attach directly to your motherboard, while other connectors attach to boards that plug into expansion slots on the motherboard. So do you remember your color codings? Keyboards, usually purple, are going to use a dedicated mini DIN 
or possibly a USB. Many DIMM plugs and ports are, again, color-coded so that you can quickly identify what type of device goes where, like, again, purple for keyboards or green for mice. So what's he plugging in here? Your monitor is going to use ports on your video card, whether it be S-Video, which is the little black round connector, DVI, which is the white connector in the center, or a 15-pin blue DB connector like VGA here on the right. So how do we get sound in and out of the PC? Well, it converts digital information into sound. It converts sound, for instance, from a microphone like I'm using now, into digital data. The mini audio jacks are for the speakers and microphones. The DB15 connector is possibly for an old joystick or a musical instrument that you want to play directly into the computer. However, for many of the newer computers, you're going to use an SPDIF connection. You see that here at the bottom in orange and the little black square there? That's for fiber optics. So remember, all of these connectors are standardized so that you can quickly identify what goes where. So is it video or sound? Well, here you see your video is going to use the VGA connector. You can tell that by the 15-pin DB connection with three rows. Your MIDI port, what you're going to use for sound, you can tell by the 15-pin DB connector with two rows. So now, how are you going to get on the internet? Well, we do that by creating networks, or groups of PCs connected together. These PCs are all connected via NICs, or network interface cards. The most common type of connector used on these NICs are an RJ45, seen here. Next, we have mice. A mouse allows you to interact with the graphical items that you see on your computer screen. These mice are connected via a mini DIN little round connector, or most modern mice are going to use USB or possibly even Bluetooth. And then you have your modem. The modem is converting analog telephone signals into a digital data signal that the PC can understand. These modems are going to use an RJ11 connector. Typically, you're going to connect from the wall to the computer. That's a must and then from the computer, possibly back to a phone. However, that's not required. Older printers used a DB25 to connect to the PC. However, most of today's printers are using USB or possibly a wireless connection. And then there's eSATA. eSATA connections are going to connect an external hard drive or possibly optical drive like CD and DVD. Now that we understand the connections and the devices, let's take a look inside the PC. You'll be able to open most cases with a standard Phillips screwdriver. Some cases, you won't need a tool at all. You can just unscrew with thumb screws. However, others might have a proprietary case that open in really odd ways and they usually use a torque wrench. Once inside the computer, electric static discharge can be the death knell for a computer. And if you, like me sometimes, can be all thumbs, you're going to drop small screws inside the computer case. Never retrieve them with metal tools. Always use plastic ones, like a pair of plastic tweezers to retrieve them. Now that we're inside, you can find all of these internal components we've spoken about, like the motherboard, devices that are attached to the motherboard, and of course, it all starts in the center with the CPU. The CPU, or microprocessor, generates a lot of heat, so you'll see a dedicated fan sitting on top of the CPU to keep it cool. There are several makes and models to choose from when it comes to a CPU, and we'll talk about some of these in more detail later, but for now, understand there are two basic makes, whether it be Intel or AMD, and then different types of packages, whether it be a pin grid array or a LAN grid array. Next, we have RAM. The RAM stores programs and data currently used by the CPU. Each piece or module of RAM is called a stick. The motherboard itself is nothing more than a thin, flat piece of circuit board. 
everything else connects directly or indirectly to the motherboard. It contains sockets for the CPU, RAM, power, and external devices like mice, printers, and keyboards. You also find expansion slots to allow you to add other components later. Next, our power supply. It's what provides electrical power to the PC components. It uses standard 110 power from your wall outlet, and it also has a dedicated fan to keep itself cool inside the case. However, an important thing to remember is even when unplugged, the high voltage capacitor still holds power. So, be careful. Although not widely seen today, you may run into floppy drives. They connect to the computer via a ribbon cable, and you'll also find a connector going directly to the power supply. And your hard drive. Just like RAM, it stores the program and data from your PC, however, it's the data not currently in use by the CPU. We'll talk about hard drives in more detail later, however, for now, understand the different types of hard drives include PETA or Parallel AT Attachments, SATA, Serial AT Attachments, or SCSI, Small Computer System Interfaces. They also will have their own dedicated power cable going to the power supply. And lastly, we have optical media drives. This includes CDs, DVDs, and Blu-ray discs. The a examination expects you to know and understand the data capacity of each one of these types of optical media. CDs stores about 700 megabytes of data, DVDs up to 16 gigs of data, and Blu-ray up to 50 gigs of data. There you have it. It's pretty simple. Remember, everything starts with the basics. Once you have these understood, everything gets a whole lot easier. If you have any questions or even just a comment, feel free to leave them below and I do read each and every one of them. I'll see you next time.